We worked really, uh, our mentality to lead, lead the state is to lead it like a business, common sense, no politics, lead it like a business, and uh, incredibly privileged that uh, as we went out and as we're finding people that uh, come from incredible backgrounds, that they say yes. And so I'm incredibly grateful to Vicki and to Casey and now Patrick uh, to the, that they've said yes. Uh, they've come from circumstances that uh, they, they probably, uh, they probably had a little easier life than when they said yes. We, day one, uh, day one we signed an executive order for broadband. Uh, Senator Jacobson here, we're partnering with the legislature where we are able to get that through so that we we have $405 million from the bead, from the funds that we'll be able to get executed and get it connected. So we, we all agree, right? Everywhere we have to have connectivity for the next generation. It's essential. Uh, from my seat, uh, you know, there's probably two things that I, I think most of us agree from a common sense perspective. Um, our roads and Dwight D. Eisenhower, right, when did interstate commerce what impact that's had on our country. Uh, because we're conservative, uh, we've uh, only done our roads on an as cash flow, and so that was a high priority. We talked about it for two and a half years, and it's really important that we can bond, we can build infrastructure roads across our state connecting communities of 15,000 people and do it in a fiscally conservative way, uh, that our grandbabies don't have to pay for it. And uh, you know, if you look back, uh, in the last 50 years, and if, if we'd have had the courage to do that sooner, just, just wonder, wonder what our communities would look like uh, because it, it's so, so vital. My view is, boy, it's game day. We've, we've got to make it happen now. These next 10 years are really, really vital that we get these things accomplished quickly so that there's nothing but the best places for our kids and our grandkids to live and do business all over the world. And so uh, the infrastructure pieces are, are, uh, are really important. So um, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the other thing I wanna, uh, if I start talking about agriculture, I won't stop. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think that uh, one thing that's essential for growing Nebraska is that we grow agriculture and that we can grow uh, agriculture because uh, we're gonna be coming forward with a, a real strong proposal to, to fix property taxes in Nebraska. The education funding uh, was one step uh, in the right direction, but it doesn't solve it. We have to change things in property taxes, but certainly one, one piece is being able to grow value-added agriculture. So here's the question for you. What's your definition, one word, there's no wrong answer, What's your definition of value-added agriculture? One word. What's your definition of value-added agriculture? I've been asking this question for 25 years, whether it's in classrooms with kids or whatever, and usually uh, in Columbus, kids would answer, if their folks worked at NPPD, they'd say electricity. If, uh, if uh, somebody's uh, child, uh, somebody's uh, parents uh, uh, worked at a bank, they'd say finance, you know, whatever, there's no wrong answer. So uh, I'm a little prejudiced. My answer is livestock. And if you just think about the extraordinary gifts that we have of people, water, and land in Nebraska, and what we can create. And so uh, kudos to everything here in Lincoln County, a bunch of folks that are here that took a lot of risks to be able to put another plant down. So um, to me, uh, as your governor, the other thing that's really, really important is that we defend agriculture from the crazies because they're uh, the animal liberation folks and the folk, the vegan societies and the fake meat that's trying to put us all out of business. Uh, number two, that we grow Nebraska, and that's why it's so important uh, with these five-star recruits to be a part of, of helping us with that. But, but again, all of us make it happen. Business farmers and ranchers make it happen. And then the others to sell it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Sunday morning, I leave uh, early, uh, real early for the first my first trade mission with our team. I think there's 20 of us going, and uh, we're going to Vietnam, and uh, so that'll be a, a new experience. And uh, the goal is uh, 
the goal is that we sell a lot of Nebraska beef. <laughs> and maybe we mix a pork chop in there. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got manufacturing a lot of it. Uh, and, you know, I have, if you wonder where Pillin's at, it's four words. It's kids, taxes, agriculture, values. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm okay if somebody wants to shoot at me for saying that I believe God should be used in the public square, shoot at me. I don't care. I believe in faith, family, and I, the Holy Spirit's alive and well. And so, job yet? I've been doing this, working with this federal program that the office was created around for some time now on the private side. So I think I bring a lot of experience, a lot of. I worked it in multiple states, so I bring models from other states. But we're going to do what's right for Nebraska. Uh, ultimately, there's a lot of models out there, but we're going to do what's right for Nebraska. And I think the message I want to get across uh, today is that this is my first opportunity to really collaborate with all of you, in a sense. And that's what's going to take all of us. This isn't an office of broadband job, this is a state of Nebraska job. We as Nebraskans have a truly unique window of opportunity here, Governor Coligain Day. Uh, in, in this decade or so, I, I will tell you, uh, and I think the data absolutely supports it, Nebraska, rural Nebraska, has opportunities we haven't had in 100 years to really change the trajectory of where we are all headed together as a state. This is an extraordinarily unique time. And, and again, I'm, I think I've got the evidence to back that up. And so the opportunity to be in this seat and be a part of the team at Department of Economic Development uh, to help leverage uh, those partnerships, those collaborations within state government, outside of state government, to take advantage of this window of opportunity, extraordinary stuff. And obviously in North Platte, you all have been the poster child of that. You've uh, accessed uh, partnerships with state government in a way that very few others have. You're really the poster child for doing this work the right way. So hats off uh, to, to the mayor and to Gary and the whole team that's making that stuff happen here. It's extraordinary. You should be really proud of what North Platte has going on. Surveys of our kids. Surveys of our kids in high school. Guess where they want to live. Nine out of ten want to live right here where they grow up. There's, there's never been the time in the history of our state like that. And that's why it's so, you know, if, if Patrick starts talking about eight or nine years for broadband, no, it's got to be four or five. It's got to happen fast. It's got to, we, we have to really make things happen. Uh, the urgency is incredibly important because uh, the future is now and it's about our kids and making sure that nobody falls through the cracks and making sure that we have the greatest opportunity with our broadband and the, every piece. So uh, those, uh, those are, uh, are uh, really, really important. The, my time at the department, the first stint, was such a surprise in many ways that the governor said. Understanding the public servants that we had within the DOT and the dedication to get the jobs done, you know, I was, I was there when we passed the Transportation Innovation Act, and really that was the big pivot to, we have these projects identified under Build Nebraska Act, we're getting them in, but what are the tools that we need to do to be able to actually expedite projects? Well, that was a conversation we had in 2016, and those tools are still in the process of being implemented. And so a lot of what we're doing at the department is underneath the surface of understanding how do we expedite these projects, how do we understand how we move them faster. You know, we were in Columbus this morning talking about a project that's going to be <coughs> their, their main street torn up for three years. We've got to do better. We've got to have conversations. But there are times where the project requires some significant <coughs> input. We worked with the legislature this year with Senator Jacobson to get through one of those hurdles. It's bonding, cash flow. We've always been a very fiscally conservative state, and we're going to stay that way. But there's tools that we can leverage that allow us to be smart, to be able to look at opportunity and say, hey, maybe we won't, maybe we can advance this project because it's ready. The department took the initiative to have it ready, and if not for cash flow, we would be there. So now we're looking at how do we condense this forward? How do we leverage the tools in a fiscally conservative way to move those projects that were promised in the 80s actually into reality, right? That's what we all want, is we want to be able to connect Nebraska to the, the system, right? We want to support our communities and the economic growth that's happening that you all have promoted and done. We want to support that with infrastructure. And so I'm really excited to work with this team. I'm really excited today to talk about the fact that we have $758 million going into the 2024 program. You know, Highway 83 I know is a big topic in this area. We're finally getting some work done there. Working through the projects that matter to these communities, that's what we're focused on. Gary Thayer's here, Kurt's here. Uh, we brought our team to make sure that you have a way to interface. I know Gary, anytime we come to the community, he's 
anytime we have a district engineer with us. He's the only person people talk to because he's the one that gets things done. I also have Amy Starr here. Amy, raise your hand. She's the one that cash flow, handles our cash flow. She, she works closely with these district engineers to make sure that the projects that they promote, they're your advocate, that they promote up to the office, make it into the program. So that every year we come out and we say, these are the projects of importance. She works with them to make sure they get done. We advanced the most conservative agenda, agenda in 150 year history of the state of Nebraska. And, uh, have a key guy that knew how to count and how to do it. I will tell you an epiphany in this process, and uh, <coughs> uh, most all of us uh, have very, very conservative viewpoints. And the epiphany for me, uh, we got beat on a, on a vote that uh, uh, touched me very deeply. Uh, and uh, said, what the heck? And uh, here's what happens. Here's what's happened to us. Us conservatives, when you tell me yes, I take your yes, and I move on. Well, guess what? <clears throat> what happens is that the other side doesn't. The other side keeps calling and calling and calling it. They think there's somebody that's got a sliver of a crack. And if, if there's anything you remember about today is whatever you believe in, uh, stay engaged in the process with your state senator, with your school boards, with your community college. They're essential for our kids. and and what kind of community and what kind of state we have. We have to stay in the game, we have to lace them up, we have to do more. I'm terribly guilty. I just worked hard, raised a family, and uh, you know, I thought somebody else would do it. So uh, how about questions, Mike? I'm not throwing the PSC under the bus. However, they've got a lot on their plate. Okay, so when you can have somebody in Patrick's position to be the broadband coordinator, reporting directly to the governor, that's a good thing. And I can tell you there's a lot of colleagues of mine who were opposed to that. But, oh, that's way too much power for the governor. Now, I can tell you I've been in business long enough to know if you can drop the bureaucracy and do that kind of work, coordinating with everyone else, DED in particular, we're going to get things done. And we're going to get it done much, much, much more quickly. When you think about roads, when you think about the challenges there, we all know, just imagine if we could have uh, if we could have bonded out some of this two years ago or a year ago when rates were lower. But still, when you start looking at that, if we can be able to build out and keep that going, the costs are just going higher and we're falling behind and we're doing it responsibly. But I can tell you, those both were heavy lifts. They, they, it's, it's kind of, we've all made the mistake, right? We have a business at home and then we start another something else and then something gets shortchanged. And that's what's happened with the PSC. They have so much on their plate, and the broadband, that's such a heavy lift, and just couldn't, it just couldn't get done. So this will make it happen, and uh, uh, it, I'm, I'm really excited. And it's, it's not an option. It's a, it's a high, high, high priority. And I'd recommend people take a look at Patrick's background. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have found somebody more qualified. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to test uh, Director Kramer's uh, comments about local projects and supporting us here, because you know, when it comes to one, one particular road project that's been on the plate for 40 years out here, goes back to when our Newberry Access, uh, our second interstate exit, was built back in 84, and it was built with enough right-of-way to make it a four-lane highway, and the people here were told from that time that eventually it would become a four-lane highway. Well, we are now 40 years out, and we have this big, big beef plant being built, right off it and still no immediate plans to get to, to get Newberry made a four lane highway. So what are your thoughts about how we can uh, move that project a bit farther up the Build Nebraska Act list so that can get done? So I think it's always important to put it in context. So promises made 40 years ago were finally actually funded 10 years ago, right? right? As we start to look through this. So the amount of work that the department's gotten done in the last 10 years looked at prioritizations across the state every community you go to has a very similar project but what I can tell you is what the governor did with this last legislative session that we haven't even hit yet was we bonded which is one tool here but we also added 10 years of BNA funding to this so now your BNA funding goes all the way to 2042 so under his vision what we discussed was you can't lose the momentum that the department has and the motivation that our staff has because you're, that project you're talking about <clears throat> isn't been brought into the actual design phase, right? 
And so, it, but you're not gonna bring a project into the design phase until you actually have the funding to construct it because you have a timeline that you match with environmental. Mm -hmm. So in order to get through the entire process of project delivery, you have to understand how that cash flows in. That's why Amy's job is so important. It's why Gary's job is so important because they match that project and the impact it has to the full state, right, Governor? Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a, as we start to move these projects through, it's okay, we have that 10 years. Now let's take a look at some of these projects like Newberry that have significant impact to economic development and let's put them into the flow. Let's start looking at how they move into the design phase from the planning phase. So absolutely, it's an identified project under Build Nebraska Act, which is the first piece that you have to have. And we have it, Gary and I talked about this project this morning when I came in on the importance of it and where it's gonna be. It's gonna be impacted by this next 10 years. I think maybe the other thing I might add to that conversation would be that, you know, it's just really, uh, I think we all need an attitudinal adjustment. I think we've made progress in the legislature where here's the question, and maybe some, uh, maybe uh, I know I've asked it here before, but what's more important to us, North Platte or Nebraska? What's more important to us, North Platte or Nebraska? Nebraska. What do you say? Oh. Nebraska? Because, and there's times their communities will look and say, and I think that why that's really important is, is that uh, when we go east to have a lot of things happen, uh, we, meet, we need to make sure that uh, uh, our representatives in the east, eastern part of the state are seeing what's best for Nebraska as well. And so I just want to make sure you're aware that in the next three years, we're going to have about a thousand additional vehicles on that road, coming and going twice a day to, to, to come and go to work. Bringing cattle in and bringing products out. So the activity there is going to increase significantly from where it has been the last 40 years. So, what we need to do now is go back and say to the public, what are those projects that are really going to impact economic development <clears throat> and meet the priorities of the department to support the state, right? And so, working with Gary and working with Kurt in this area to understand the impact of the agricultural community as well as the economic impact, absolutely that will happen. Not to mention all the trucks coming and going. <laughs> and, and that traffic is inherently going to change even how those roads were structured 15 years ago. I mean, where, where's that in the process? If Understand that the way that we move these projects through, part of, uh, part of the process is looking at the traffic patterns, doing a traffic impact study, understanding what is that flow of traffic. If it's a federally funded project or even if it's state, we're gonna go through your public involvement to where we understand the project, the purpose and need of the project, what is it supporting, what are the reasons we're even doing it, what's the traffic flow pattern, all of that gets taken into consideration. What's more important, Nebraska is, but without North Platte, Nebraska's not moving us forward, right, right, in this project. 100%, 100%. so I mean, the point simply is, is we've always, there's, you know, we've always gotta say, hey, what's best for Nebraska? That's the answer. And uh, what we are lacking is housing, and I know you guys are very aware of that. We feel as a community that if we can bring developed lots and infrastructure, that we can get the builders here to build affordable and quality uh, homes for people to live in. And I, I would like to get a feel for what you guys see as the state's role in collaborating with us to help with infrastructure for housing. First step would be to go to the city council and say, what, what are stuff that we're putting barriers up to building homes that are doing nothing but adding costs? That'd be the first step. Second step then is to be able to sit and say, okay, who, you know, who can, how do we, how do we get that infrastructure cost out of there so that, it, you know, it can happen? And then thirdly, uh, you know, this isn't politically correct, but it's just the way it is. Uh, in every community, uh, who is not excited about having uh, outside folks come in and build workforce housing? It's our local folks in the industry, even though they're swamped, they can't do it more. And that's where we, that's more the attitude on what's best for Nebraska, because dad gum, you know? Uh, we have to get these homes built, it's, it's, it's essential. And the good news is across the state, any community that's done anything, the, the homes are either sold or rented before the doors are hung. So, uh, you know, we just gotta figure out how to get the cost down, uh, then there's really no risk to doing it. So, uh, we, we can figure that out. But the state, can, the state needs to be involved and create some incentives, but the state can't be the solution to all of it. 10 years ago, there was probably nobody in this room that would have considered hiring somebody that was released from prison. Uh, with Director Jeffries, we will have a transformative programming plan where people are able to get uh, 
reconnected and have great jobs and become contributing members of society and you know that's another part now that that's you know that's more in the eastern part of the state but those are investments that are really really critical uh, 92 percent of the people that get incarcerated are going to get out do we want to improve can we get them to community colleges get more training more skill set so they're really contributing members of society it's a it's a big deal and we actually thought one of our biggest challenges was going to get your office to establish um, help for us in bringing into our area. And so it was very um, challenging or refreshing when you took the initiative and did that without us having the pressure Lincoln. We're very grateful for the team that you've assembled. I've had the opportunity to attend several meetings with Ann Byers and Patrick Redmond from your office. And the tools that they have given us to start writing our plans out here are incredible. So thank you for taking the initiative and doing that for us. And no, thank you for engaging. That's one of the uh, priorities I have in my experiences in other states, oftentimes uh, large urban areas tend to outnumber the rural areas in those meetings, 20 to 1, 15 to 1, and we can't let that happen. We've got to engage rural Nebraska so that that equity is actually equitable across Nebraska and not centered somewhere on the east, mm -hmm. eastern border, if you, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, yep. and we've seen that through your actions that you've taken out here already. And the importance of us being able to go online and market our product is, is very important 